Hello and welcome to Sage Chapel Cemetery in O'Fallon, Missouri. This is an overview of the cemetery here. We're going to go for a brief walk down the sidewalk here as we take a look and take a look at the marked and unmarked graves that are here at Sage Chapel Cemetery. Right now we're walking on the north side of the cemetery, the sidewalk right along the Veterans Memorial Parkway, which was a former highway. Here is a the original sign for Sage Chapel Cemetery. As we continue heading east along the north side of the cemetery, we find the new sign right here for Sage Chapel Cemetery, which was put here just a couple of years ago. When I first came here in 2011, of course, that sign was not here. Just the other sign was the only sign that we had. As we continue walking along the north side, notice that, of course, there's a, a wide open space here where there are no markers. As we walk a little bit closer in here to the first set of graves, it's one of our newest uh, burials here, that of Douglas Riley. And there are some holes here, so I'm going to have to be very careful for not to dislocate an ankle or something. But he's buried there. I'm going to watch my step here a little bit, try to be a little more careful. A little bit treacherous today. This is the marker for D. Thomas. And uh, I consider that to be a funeral home marker, although the Bowie marker that was here 2011 is not here today. This is another marker, just grave mark, just with a cross. And uh, this is one of the Thomas uh, burials here. The next uh, stone we come to, actually, is that of Lottie Washington. Um, you see, born June 5th, 1900, died June 16th, 1961. Moving on here, we have both a funeral marker and a, a handmade stone for Delia Dyer. And you can kind of see how it's spelled there. And if I zoom in here, Here's the funeral marker here, and you'll notice um, the funeral marker has a birth year of 1884. The handmade marker has a birth year of 1878. Delia or Delia Dyer. <coughs> Excuse me. We have another area here where there's no markers. As we go back toward the back of the cemetery, we run into some more markers. Hopefully not literally. That would be kind of painful. This is the marker for Maria Brady, who died in 1924. And then uh, we have some uh, other flags here, some pink flags that are in the cemetery today. I'm watching my step here. Over here, we have the, well, the tombstone for William and Jane Clarence, husband and wife, and he was one of the pastors in the area. And this is a marker that says Thomas Clonch on it. A little hard to see because the sun is in the west with the marker facing east the way it is. A little hard to make that out to the sun. Here we have a uh, base for a stone. And right next to the base, here's the actual tombstone of Claude Dierker. His obituary calls him Clyde Dierker. But uh, there's the marker right there. We have several uh, people the last name of Sally that are buried here as well. Mary, Sally. Um, I think these markers might have been placed here at a later date, not, at, not in 1919 or in 1929. These markers appear to be a little bit newer than that. Although I don't, couldn't tell you exactly when they were placed. Here's the marker for Skylar Sally, or Georgia May Sally, as she's called on her death certificate. Here, a little bit further, 
as we head towards the middle, um, you see the marker for George Sanders, who died in 1940 in Illinois. Um, but his his body was brought back here, and presumably we have five burials here. I, I presume these might be all Sanders. Certainly, two of them are, as this is a fragment of a stone for. Uh, I believe it's Carl Sanders. Uh, no, Colonel Sanders is not buried here. Um, thought I would answer that question before we got too far along. Um, there are uh, several unmarked burials that are just marked by flowers, like this one. And of course, as we head back here toward the east side of the cemetery, we move on to our next grave, Margaret Hughes Luckett and her husband, Leslie Bucket. There's an unmarked grave here on the north side of the new, new marker for Howard Morris. Um, unlike the previous stone, this actually has the middle initial for Howard Morris. The uh, repla was replaced an earlier stone, which was broken, but did not have his middle initial on it. And uh, on the south side of the stone, there's another uh, grave. Kind of hard to see. There's a cross here. There we go. And I uh, thought that might be Howard Morris as well. Uh, is buried next to him. Here's um, the marker for Florence B. Vardam. And uh, she died in 1911 and has a, uh, on her death certificate, the B stands for Beatrice, apparently. was her middle name. Now we have this uh, here we go into this area here. Again, there's not much here. Um, you know, I pointed out the, the markers here, and this will give you a vantage point of where we just were uh, in relationship to the VFW Hall, which is right over here, and also to Veterans Memorial Parkway. Now I'm um, over toward the subdivision side of the cemetery. The houses running Molloy Drive are uh, to my to the south of where I am And there's the dog saying hi again He's got a pretty good bark. I must say But hey, you know, what's a good what's a cemetery video without a dog, right? All right, this is the tombstone for Elizabeth Hayden. Hi Yeah, nice seeing you Please stay on that side of the fence. I will not be coming over just taking a video all right anyway as I was saying we have various stones here the Edward stone is the closest to that dog by the way and it's right here I don't know if you can see it very well and that's the burial there behind the um, the Winston stone uh, there's another grave that's uh, unmarked except with a wreath. Back here we have quite uh, an interesting area here and there's some more flowers back here in this corner. Right here there's some purple, pink or purple flowers I guess you call them. Uh, this is a project done by the, um, mentioned in 2013 by Jim Frain and uh, he was involved with that, uh, according to uh, an article on uh, Patch.com, the O'Fallon Patch version. There's some more flowers back here toward the back. And now we're on the western side of the cemetery. The westernmost marker is that of Priscilla Ball, which you can see right here. And she died on, she died in 1900. And this is her marker here. As we continue our trek back toward Veterans Memorial Parkway and away from the dog, thankfully, we have a footstone here. Got some flowers again. And this was the uh, headstone for Hilda Claiborne. I don't know if you can see that or not. Again, the sun's in the west, so it's a little bit tricky. If I zoom in, you might be able to make that out. Not too bad. And uh, anyway, 
And as we move on from here, we have the uh, tombstone lying on the ground of Eldora Abington. Uh, and uh, of course, this might be the back side, I can't tell. Let's see. Looks like it's not, but it's a little hard to read. Again, some sugaring has happened on this marker to make it a little bit tricky. So you just have to take my word for it. Over here is uh, what may be the burial site for Walter Burrell, one of the church trustees of the AME Church, but uh, can't really prove that. Although his wife definitely has a marker here. This is her right here. I apologize for uh, the time of day. Should have come here in the morning probably, but that's okay. Better late than never, right? Better never late, as what uh, one of the folks at one of the churches where I've worked has said, too. Lucy Hughes White is buried here. She was married a couple times, I think three. Now, in this line uh, right here, there's actually a series of markers um, with a tree in between them. And um, those markers will do next Arthur and Michi Edwards are buried there. Then we have a tree right here. A marker which says Dorothy E. Edwards, although apparently she was married to a heart. Betty E. Norris. And speaking of hearts, Leo LaRue Hart, who was a Korean War veteran. He did not die here. He died in the state of Louisiana, but his remains were brought back here to O'Fallon. He still has family in the area, by the way. And uh, last but not least, come back over here on the toward Veterans Memorial Parkway. We have Simon and Cora White here. And then as we head back toward the subdivision a little bit, Jesse White, Cora L. White Thornton. A little bit of a break here. We've got uh, some unmarked barrels, three to be exact, in the middle. Um, the marker that says Catherine Hayden, who died in 1988. And uh, here's another one here. And those are uh, all the markers that are here at Sage Chapel. Those are all the graves that have been identified. So that's uh, this has been a tour of Sage Chapel Cemetery. Hope you have enjoyed this and hope this will actually help uh, provide an idea of the layout of the cemeteries. Hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you very much for listening.